So in our last video, we showed that if we add a nulling resistor in series with our compensation capacitor, we could indeed control the, the location of the zero. And in fact, we can control the location of the zero so that it's either in the right half plane or in the left half plane. And this allows us to control the phase shift. So here is our equation for our zero, one over CC times the quantity one over GM2 minus RZ, the size of the resistor. If RZ is less than one over GM2, then omega Z1 remains in the right half plane. Of course, we can control the frequency of the zero, uh, so this isn't necessarily a problem, but we also have some advantage if we move it to the left half plane. So if RZ is greater than one over GM2, then omega Z1 moves to the left half plane. So we wanna talk about how to optimally uh, move the, the zero so that the transfer function is optimal. And we talked about wanting to have poles as far apart as possible from one another. In order to optimally size uh, this, uh, the uh, zero, let's look at the transfer function where we have one zero and three poles, which was our case after adding the nulling resistor. Now note that this zero can be in the left half plane or the right half plane. So I'm gonna put an S plus or minus Z1 here. And in general, we're going to say that P1 is at a lower frequency than P2 is at a lower frequency than P3. Now, if we want to provide the farthest spacing between two poles, then what we would want to do is cancel P2 with Z1. In other words, we'd want to set Z1 so that it was at exactly the same frequency as P2. All right, so let's look at how to do that. We know that one over CC times one over GM two minus RZ is our Z1. We wanna set this equal to GM two over CL. And this tells us then that RZ needs to be equal to CC plus CL over CC times one over GM two. Now our new value for, this is going to affect omega P3 because omega P3 depended upon Z and RZ. So omega P3 is now going to be equal to one over RZ times C1 and we can substitute our new value for RZ, and we find that the new omega P3 is equal to one over C1 times one plus CL over CC times one over GM2. All right, so now let's look at our transfer function. All right, just as before, we have our flow frequency gain, we hit our pole frequency omega P1 that was due to the compensation capacitor. Now we come out to some location in the middle here. And we know that this is where omega P2 is equal to omega Z1. And we have pole zero cancellation at this point. And finally, we get out to our omega P3 frequency, and we get our extra 20 dBs per decade of roll off. So if we want to size the compensation capacitor, we remember that the size of the compensation capacitor depends upon the phase margin that we want. And we know that we want to size this now so that 
when our closed loop gain, or when we're operating in closed loop, that our closed loop response intersects at exactly whatever the second pole frequency is. Well, because of the pole zero cancellation of omega P2 and omega Z1, omega P3 is now effectively the second pole frequency. So our compensation capacitor CC is going to be given by GM1 times the tangent of our desired phase margin divided by omega P3 times our desired closed loop gain ACL. We can, of course, substitute the value for omega P3 that we just found, and we would find that CC is equal to the square root of GM1 over GM2 times C1 times CL divided by our closed loop gain. And then we need to adjust for the scaling factor uh, due to the phase margin. I need to move this equation just a little bit. All right, so now we've added the phase margin compensation. All right, so that's it. We can now design a, any two-stage operational amplifier based upon these principles, uh, a desired phase margin, knowing what the load capacitance uh, is and uh, what the desired uh, closed loop gain is. Now, if we're making a generic amplifier, we generally design for a closed loop gain equal to one, uh, assuming that the amplifier maybe uses a buffer. This is generally the worst case. But if we're making an, an application specific uh, amplifier uh, where we know that the closed loop gain will be uh, never uh, be smaller than a particular value, then we can design uh, for that closed loop gain. Generally, we'll also need to know something about what the maximum size of the load capacitance is. Again, if we're designing a general purpose, uh, we, we want to make the load capacitance as big as it might possibly ever be. But if we're designing an operational amplifier that's always going to be used in a very specific uh, load situation, then we can design uh, for that specific load situation. All right, so that's it for compensation. Um, we will uh, talk about feedback in the next set of videos.